and here's where I sell. I'm selling right here. I'm up 54% of my contracts. I'm out, guys. I'm out. I'm selling. I'm out. Kind of boring right now, but let's see if, you know, price could eventually get back above the one and the five. I don't think SPY is in danger of selling down today. Um, you know, I think the worst case scenario is that we'll see a bunch of chop. If you sell down below here, it opens the gates to <clears throat> 383.90, but I just can't see it happening. I really just, I really think we just resolve bullishly. I mean, you know, you could see it. It's, it's really not such a crazy bull case. All of the mangums, including Tesla and NVIDIA and AMD, are above their hourly triggers. So, you know, even though it's not happening right now, like not yet, at some point, there should be like a, a boost in all of these stocks and they should start trending higher. And when that happens, whether it's now, whether it's in 30 minutes, an hour, once that like boost kicks in, then we should see SPY rip up to the hourly trigger or possibly even break above. Um, and, you know, that's when we could really turn bullish for the day. And who knows, maybe even attack the monthly trigger at 394.18. So again, this isn't how we usually trade. We usually take trades based off, you know, what trigger signal is telling us on SPY itself. But today we're just experimenting using our new table, telling us that everything is bullish. So there's no reason not to expect SPY to follow at some point. Tesla, nice bounce off the HT. And Apple, nice bounce off its 182.83 level. So not a bad idea to long against this for Apple. Just keep, on, keep our eyes out on Tesla on the second screen. Um, yeah, okay, so it looks like it's getting that nice bounce off the hourly trigger. And we can assume that the next push up takes us takes us up here so that would probably bring spy either above 38.07 or at least at 38.07 again we want this purple line um, to come down and move below price and that'll tell us that we're really ready to ramp up so this is what we're waiting on I think to, to really get a push higher we're waiting for this purple line right here to move down below price so we're testing the five minute trigger here obviously if we could break above that would be optimal but because velocity is still negative probably gonna need some time to pin against it um, before actually moving above it. Don't expect to be able to break above on a first try when um, five minute VLO is still negative. So we rejected one, probably reject a second or third time, but then we could possibly break above in a little bit as the five minute velocity starts to reappear. So this is very constructive for us. Um, you know, once this purple line moves fully below price, we should be able to continue moving to the upside. And hopefully attack the hourly trigger. This level hasn't seemed like such a big resistance, so I'm hoping we could just knife right through it to the upside. But as you guys can see, you know, second rejection of the five minute trigger, but as long as we could stay above the one for another few minutes, the negative five minute velocity will repair itself, and then the price should be able to break above the five. So we're really just waiting for the negative five minute velocity to get a little bit better. And you know, this is our targets up above. It's either gonna be the, uh, the hourly trigger right here, or it's gonna be 390. I don't think 388.06 should provide too much of a, of a resistance. So a couple more minutes in here, um, negative five minute velocity will, will get better. And then hopefully we can just push above the five minute trigger. One minute trigger crosses above and that's when we push up here. We wanna see the purple line come right through price and then you know more confidence to the upside. So here we go, it looks like SPY is finally starting to push above its five minute trigger. We'll see if it sticks. The five minute velocity is repairing right now. So, you know, it might take like three, four more minutes, but then we should be able to be able to sail above. And you'll know, you'll know if, the bull the if the bull thesis is wrong, if, you know, these start flipping red. But for now, everything still looks good. So we're just gonna hold on to these calls. Obviously, what bulls wanna see here is the one minute trigger crossing above the five. And if you're bearish here, you wanna see price move below this level. Okay, so it looks like we're close to getting the purple line under price in the five minute, and then the next step would be getting the purple line under price in the 15 minute. Once you have both of those, you know, at that point, I'm just gonna assume we're gonna hit the hourly trigger. Because then we have a lot of bullish conf um, confluence between LDPM and between, you know, the hourly trigger status. All right, so if you wanna trim at this level, not a bad idea, you know, to make itself prove it to you, to make price prove that it can get above first, so if we come up here and you want to trim, it should be about 15, 20%. That's fine. Um, but I think I'm just going to, you know, hold on for the day, see what happens. I'm trying to like not actively trade it and more just sit in a position and trust my thesis that we're headed up here today. So this is starting to look good. You guys can see LDPM on the five minute now moving below price. So once that happens, um, we should be able to move up, continue moving up to the upside. Just check back in on Tesla for a minute. 
Yeah, so Tesla bounced off its hourly, and now it's you know got above the five minute trigger. So again, similar story. It should be headed up to test the daily trigger at 185. Apple has not been able to get any acceleration above this level, so I'd be curious, you know, if it could push up at all. We know there's been, you know, plenty of rejections at this level. So to help our bull thesis, we want to see a lot of separation away from 152.83. We want to see, you know, price really starting to climb. Separate itself from here. We'll have the hourly velocity step up even stronger. And that's when we can get a um, nice, powerful push higher. For now, until Apple is able to separate itself from this level, it seems like we're just going to be chopping around. But, you know, maybe today's the day where we get that boost higher and Apple moves up another level, bringing SPY up with it. Apple hasn't been able to really trend bullishly. It's more, you see, since, um, since last Friday, well, really since 10, uh, 10 days ago, um, Apple has just really been chopping in this range, had a nice bounce off the daily trigger here, and then, you know, had a pretty bounce off the daily trigger here. So just hoping to see like a nice um, upside thrust from Apple as opposed to just sitting on this 152.83 level. So as SPY comes into here, you can either trim right now to force this level to prove itself. Um, we're up 17% uh, on those calls, so if you want to take it, you can do that right here. Um, this is going to act as resistance. Um, if you don't want to take it, if you want to hold to the hourly trigger, that's fine too. But, um, you know, if you just want to grab a quick profit right now, you could totally take it right here, take the money and run because we are expecting this level to act as resistance for now. So 388.06 is where you would have trimmed if you wanted to sell at this level. For me, I'm going to hold on a bit longer. Um, you know, I really want to get an hourly trigger test, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm waiting for. Um, but you're totally free to take the money right here. It's about a 16% gain. We went long in here, so whenever you can make 16% in like 15 minutes, it's always a good idea to just grab it. But again, like I said, um, because things just look really bullish to me around the market, although this might act as resistance to start, I do think at some point today we should be able to break above it and move up to the hourly trigger, or maybe even you know break through the hourly trigger and move up all the way to Gavin's next level. So if you guys look at the hourly velocity, you'll see how much better it's improved. Since it's improved so much, I don't think you know there's going to be too much resistance at the hourly trigger. We know yesterday we had you know rejection, rejection, rejection. Um, but today I think if we get up there, we should be able to push through. So it's all about this 388.06 level right now. It's 10:33. So obviously we just had a half hour close below, which can easily send us right back down to here and you know just keep chopping in this range. But I'm hoping at some point today we could just break above this and push up to the hourly trigger which you know might lead to a runner if we can break above then we have these upper level targets ahead so again you know two ways to play it you can just hold on or you could cut at this level and made price prove itself that it can stay above before going long again um for for bears you know obviously you don't want to see this cross happening for bulls you definitely want to see this cross happening once you know the one minute crosses above the five probably good likelihood that um, the triggers will push price through this level but there's also the slight chance that this level is so strong that it'll just push price right back down through the triggers. So it's it's going to depend on a lot on Apple, if Apple can get some separation away from this level or not. It's also going to depend if Tesla can, you know, start chugging towards the daily trigger. Right now, Tesla hasn't really been able to get um, so much separation off of the hourly trigger yet. So we are going to want to see that nice push higher in Tesla. Um, maybe get the hourly velocity going a bit. Um, and that'll also help our bear case, help our bull case out. So again, if you didn't take it the first time, um, you could take it now again, and then just go long again once price proves itself that it can remain above this level. You could try it. You could sell right now, then wait for a back test of this level before going long again. Or you could just, you know, hold on to it. If you're in zero dates, it might be wise to just grab the profit right here. If you have some time on your calls and you want to just wait for the hourly trigger, that's fine as well. But obviously, you guys can see the importance of this level. Um, you know, a couple of wick rejections, so just letting it play out. All right, so it looks like, you know, our thesis is playing out well. Um, if you want to take profit, should be up over 20% here. So it's always a great time to take profit. We said, you know, we wanted to see LDPM move below price, and you guys could see when that happened was right before SPY made that push higher right here. So that was a great confluence. And then, you know, the next step to really know that we're bullish would be, get, would be to get the 15-minute LDPM below price. Once that happens, we're almost certainly going to be able to push up to the hourly trigger here. For now, we're just battling this range. An hourly close above here would obviously be, be very conducive for, for more upside. So again, you know, nothing wrong with taking the profit. We went long over here. 
We're now a dollar above where we went long, so nothing wrong with taking gains here. And, you know, just waiting for like an hourly close above 388.06 to go long again. If the LDPM on the five minute moves back above price, that's going to be a sell signal for me and I'm going to get out of my calls. Also, if price does somehow hit the hourly trigger, I'm definitely going to sell my calls. And then if the one minute trigger moves above the hourly trigger along with price, then I'll try to long it again to this level. Again, if you want to take the win, you're more than welcome to. Here's where we went long. So again, we're a dollar above where we went long. Should be a nice little trade. So if you want to take that, you can go right ahead and do that. I think it's really going to come down to the hourly close. There's 22 minutes left to the hour, but if SPY can close the hourly above 388.06, then I'd assume we're going to go up to the hourly trigger. And if it closes the hourly candle below here, then we're probably going to be in for another hour of chop, which at that point, I'll probably just let go of my calls and try again later because I don't want to just get eaten up by theta all day. So again, keeping an eye on Apple. Apple still has not been able to get some separation away from uh, this important 152.82 level, just, you know, kind of just drifting above it. We're also keeping an eye out on Tesla to see if Tesla can start pushing up towards the daily trigger above. It should be able to. Um, it would be great if the LDPM on the five minute moves below price. That'll also give us some additional confluence that we're going to head up. All right, so if we move up another dollar, then I'm definitely going to be selling right here. Just keep that in mind. All right, so this is nice. Uh, Tesla LDPM just came below price in the five minute. So Tesla should get a nice little push up here, um, and which in turn should help SPY as well move up to its hourly trigger. And then let's take a look at Apple. Apple also, LDPM just moved below the five. So I think we get a nice little push up here in SPY right now. Um, we really want to get this separation away from this level. Like maybe if Apple breaks below the previous high, that'll really send it. And if that happens, and instead of selling at the hourly trigger, I think we'll have enough momentum to break above and we'll try to ride it all the way up to 390.63. So let's see if Apple, you know, benefits from LDPM moving below price. And Tesla as well should also get a nice little push up here. And now that five minute LDPM crossed above price. The real kicker um, would be if the 15 minute LDPM moves below price, then we're really going to get a nice push higher. So we want to see that on Apple and we want to see that. Oh, so Apple does have the 15 minute LDPM below price. So things look good. You know, um, Apple has not been able to get a real move in a while. So I'm hoping that happens for us today. So that spy can move above the hourly trigger, but definitely looks like it's moving in the right direction. Again, if we could see Tesla 15 minute LDPM move below price, then we really should have an easy time moving up here to the hourly trigger. So at this point, we're up 30% on our contracts. That's a great gain in the morning. So if you guys want to take that, go ahead. And here's where I sell. I'm selling right here. I'm up 54% on my contracts. I'm out, guys. I'm out. I'm selling. I'm out. I'm out. Completely out. All right, I sold. So you don't have to sell now. I think price will be able to break above the hourly trigger but we just made 54% in less than a half hour. So, you know, it was fairly easy trade. It wasn't too difficult. So when it's not too difficult, I usually just like take the money and run. When it was a really difficult trade that I had to sit through for mad long and it's like frustrating and I'm like, oh, I hate the market. I'm taking everything from them. Then I'll usually sit in it a drop longer. But for now, I'm gonna take the money. Um, we all know when the one and the five is really far below the hourly trigger, it's a lot harder for price to break above. So I'm out, I sold my contracts, 54% on them, and now I'm gonna wait a bit. You know, once the one and the five move a little higher um, and closer to the hourly trigger, then I'll think about taking another long above the hourly trigger. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, made some money. I'm gonna close the live stream now, one and done for now. And then if there's another trade uh, shaping up soon, I'll get back on live with you guys again.